Hi, as you are aware, marketing mix modeling is currently used by a multitude of advertisers to measure advertising effectiveness and inform budget allocation decisions across media channels. As a result, we started the series with a spreadsheet based model and progressed to video walkthroughs on Facebook's open source code Robin. If you haven't seen that yet and are new to MMM, we would be linking the videos here in the description. I advise you to go through them as well to gain an overall understanding of MMM. In this video, we will go through another media mix modeling via Google Lightweight. However, a small caveat is that this is not an official Google response to Facebook Robin. Before we jump in, here is a brief intro about me. I am Virendra Shikhawat, Senior Performance Marketing Manager with Rocketship HQ. I have over seven years of experience in mobile marketing with a deep interest in analytics, having led a number of analytics initiatives at Rocketship HQ. Now, let's discuss a bit about Google Lightweight. Lightweight, like any other MMM, quantifies the relationship between media channel activity and sales, while controlling for other factors. A simplified model overview is shown here on the screen, where KPI is typically the volume or value of sales per time period. Alpha is the model intercept. Trend is a flexible non-linear function that captures trends in the data. Seasonality over here is a function with configurable parameters that flexibly capture seasonal trends. Media channels just shows different media channel activity which can include impressions or cost per time period and then other factors which is a matrix of other factors that could influence sales, for example, some promotion we ran or any other external factor we want to include in the modeling. Lightweight takes a Bayesian approach to MMM, unlike Facebook Robin, and it allows us to integrate prior information into modeling. Bayesian simply means an informed method, learning from previous iterations. Whereas as we are well aware, Robin works on ridge regression and some evolutionary algorithms. As a result, while Robin takes a lot of time to do thousands of iterations and a number of tries, lightweight is very, very fast. Another point being the lightweight MMM can either be run using data aggregated at the national level or the geo level. National level simply means if we take country level data in our modeling. It is also the most common format used in MMMs. Geo level is when data can be aggregated at a sub-national level, which is a state level within a country. For a bigger country like US, this approach can yield more accurate results as it uses more data points to fit the model. With respect to media saturation, each media channel has a lagged effect that tapers off slowly over time. Lightweight provides three options here, first being ad stop, which applies an infinite lag that decreases its weight as time passes. Second, hill ad stop, which applies a sigmoid-like function for diminishing returns to the output of the ad stop function. And the third being carryover, which applies a casual convolution giving more weight to the near values than distant ones. Now. Before we go through the code, let's take a high level overview of the entire model. As we can see over here, the first step that applies to any MMM model is preparing the data. Over here, we will do pre-processing of the data, which includes scaling. And we will discuss a bit about scaling a little bit later. The second being training the model. Over here, we will use lightweight MMM library in order to train the model. And then as we go forward, we will be doing model diagnostics to understand whether the model that we are creating is the right fit. So over here, we will look at the convergence, we'll fit the model, we'll do a predictive check, and then among other factors we will do parameter estimate checking and then we will be plotting the insights that we'll be getting from the model once we have these three steps ready we will run the optimization where our 
primary objective of running MMM, that is where we want to divert most of our budget to gain better results. So we will be optimizing our media spend, our media budgets in number four. And once everything is ready, we will save the model to our laptop. So this is like a high level overview. And now quickly go through the code and see how we can make this happen. Unlike Facebook Robin, Google Lightweight runs on Python, which we make it possible via Google Colab. Here we do not have to set up the environment and can simply go to Google Colab and start using it. So if you go and search on Google, Google Colab, you will see this screen and from here you simply click on file and click on new notebook. As soon as you do that, you will see a very similar notebook and over here you will simply paste the code that we have attached to the video description. It doesn't matter if you are super familiar with coding as long as you are able to follow the instructions in the notebook. Obviously if you are, you can tweak the code as you like and gain better insights as the code is public and you can make tweaks to get the best out of it. Let's start. So first what we will do is we need to install lightweight MMM library. So we will click on this. What it does is either we can click over here the play button or we can do a command enter as well to run the code within each cell. Now it is showing an error or a warning which is very standard and we will be seeing this uh, very often so what we will do is we'll start runtime yes and this has just initialized the runtime over again from here as we go forward once it is done we will not run uh, this cell again because sometimes it throws an error so what we need to do is we can go ahead and then import the other libraries that we will need in order to run MMM. So we'll uh, import NumPy and other libraries like Pandas, which are very critical in order to see the data that we require. And then the other library or modules from lightweight MMM. So for example, optimize media, which we would be needing to optimize our media spends, then plot because we will need, be needing the charts pre-processing and similarly utils. Instead of using custom data, which has very specific patterns, I'm using a fictitious data set from Kaggle that contains five years worth of bike sales and historical marketing spends. I'll put the link for this data set in the video description. So simply what we need to do is we download the data set. We go to our call, uh, we will upload the file from here. So if this is our data set, bike sales, we open and towards our left under files, we will see that we have a CSV, bike underscore sales underscore data dot CSV. What we need to do is we copy path and then we will paste it over here. So this is our data set. How does it look like? We will click on play and this will showcase that we have a weekly data set from 2017 onwards to 2022. We have sales as a dependent variable and among independent variables we have spent from all of these media channels. For example, Facebook, print, out of home, TV, radio and similarly. Next what we will do is we will define those uh, media variables in here so for example media underscore data we are putting that into a data frame branded search spend these are our independent variables and then our target which is a dependent variable in our case is sales and then cost because we are taking cost only in this factor uh, and not impressions so we will just copy the same under cost as well when we click on media underscore data dot shape, we will see that we have 260 rows and seven variables over here. So you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven independent variables 
and 260 rows and that's what this displays post that we will click on data size which will uh, just create a data shape the good thing about lightweight mmm is we will run the model on not the entire data set but we will split the data set into train and test over here when we split the data set so we see that we are splitting the data set at a point where data size minus 30 that means we are excluding last 30 rows for testing purposes and before that everything we are keeping it under training data set so we have over here media data so if we look at media underscore data underscore train that means our training data would be up to a split point so from first or second row to the split point which would be 230 because our entire data set has 260 rows we have excluded 30 rows for test data set so our trained data set would contain 230 rows and then our test data set would be after those and so our split point in this case would be for the last 30 rows in here then similarly we are splitting our target as well so saves data so we are splitting up to the point where we have split the data on train and test going forward we will be scaling the data a bit about scaling so as you know all the machine learning algorithms make decisions according to the data sets applied to them and often the algorithms calculate the distance between the data points to make better inferences out of the data scaling is a technique to make them closer to each other or in simpler words we can say that the scaling is used for making data points generalized so that the distance between them will be lower why we do that is because it makes it easy for a model to learn and understand the problem so it doesn't matter if you are not able to understand this but what it's generally doing is it's scaling the data so that if you have a lot of zeros in your data set the algorithm will scale or generalize the data in order to process the data in a better way so for example over here we are doing scaling on media target and cost right where we have jnp.mean and then similarly we are doing this for train data as well now once the scaling is done on media data target data and cost data what we will do is we will run lightweight model on any of the three that we have so we have carryover, hill add stock and add stock. Hill add stock is basically the fastest among all these three and is widely used. But in this case, uh, we will be using carryover so that we have more accurate results. And you can learn more about all of these three by going to GitHub page where they have more definitions and descriptions about all of these three. And we will put a link uh, about GitHub in the description as well. But for now, let's take carryover. And then over here, we are selecting how many number of warmups and samples. This is very similar to iterations we have. And once we have that, we will be building the model over here. So this is fitting the model for train data, which is already scaled over here. And we will see how much time it takes. Uh, so as you see, this is very fast and this is because we have taken less number of warm-ups and samples in this case 100 but if we would have taken thousand in each of these cases it would have taken a lot of time so in in such cases it's ideal to use a uh, hill add stock which is very fast and will give us very good results as well so let's wait uh, to see how much uh, time it takes to complete the operation now this is completed as you see this is 100 percent post that we can take a look at the summary of the entire model now it's not important to understand each one of these but basically these are the different coefficients or parameters that we saw when we were going uh, through how mmm model works for example seasonality effect delay uh, coefficients of different medias in our case since those are seven different media channels we see coefficients of each one of those 
and then trend as well. So this uh, simply gives us each of mean, standard, deviation, and median for each one of those. And then we have R hat as well, which is very critical in this case. So always try to have R hat less than 1.10. If in many cases, if we are seeing if R hat is higher than 1.10, it's ideal to go back to the model, change number of warm-ups, change number of samples, increase them, or use some other model name, uh, maybe hill at stop or at stop, or uh, to see if it provides better results in terms of R hat. Once we have summary, we will plot these uh, posteriors. And when we do that, what we will see is we will see separate plots for each of the media channels that we have. These are basically uh, the media effects, which shows an estimate of the coefficients for each media channel. High number means a channel influenced the sales or revenue more. In this case, the x-axis is the estimated coefficient, whereas the y-axis is how confident the model. So if we see that the coefficient for media channel 0 is between 0.1 and 0.2, and we see the highest curve, highest peak over here. That means this much confident the model is that the coefficient for media channel zero is somewhere around here. And similarly for media channel one. So this basically uh, gives us an effect of each of these media channels. For example, if you look at media channel four, we see with very high uh, very high uh, estimation confidence that the coefficient for media channel 4 is 0. That means it's not contributing to the sales uh, a lot uh, better than some other different media channels that we have. Once we have that, we'll plot the model over here. So green line over here depicts the true KPI and the green one is showcasing the predicted KPI. The two important parameters to look out for is R square and MAP. R square is 0.97 and MAP is mean absolute percentage error, which is a measure of prediction accuracy of a forecasting method. So if it's 13.13%, ideally we would like it to have less than 10%, but if it's not the case and if it's higher, we may need to relook at the model and change some parameters in order to improve this. So over here it's 13% and we are able to see that this is not accurately predicting true KPI versus predicted KPI. When we have that, we will scroll down where we will be scaling the test media data set as well if we have not done so before. So since it has 30 rows, we are scaling a test data set as well. Now we will plot out the sample model fit. Over here, we see that uh, we have true KPI versus predicted KPI, and then our MAP score is 12.42%, R square is 0.96. And in order to go forward, we will look at media insights, where we will see at the media contribution uh, of each of the media channel we have. And then from matplotlib and using separate other functions, what we are trying to do is we are trying to identify the contribution for each of the media channel and how we can effectively allocate budgets. We run this and we will be plotting uh, what we have done at the top over here. So it doesn't matter if you're not able to understand each of the line in the code, as long as you are able to follow this. So when we click this, we are able to see for the entire period baseline contribution that is uh, that can be termed as an intercept when all the media channels spend is zero. And then we have contribution from each of the seven media channels we have, uh, which is visible over here. Next, we will plot in the form of bar media where we have media contribution percentage. So as you can see on x axis we have our media channels and on y axis is the percentage of contribution so we see that channel number zero is having the maximum uh, contribution and then channel three four and five has the least 
now next we will plot the ROI because uh, apart from the contribution uh, what's more important is ROI because there are a number of channels even though whose contribution is higher but ROI uh, can be also on the higher side for example if we are doing remarketing where even though uh, the spend uh, on remarketing would be on the lower side but we will be having a higher ROI so we need to be looking at both the charts separately to understand the true effectiveness. So now, uh, as uh, as you are able to see that channel number one has the highest ROI now and not channel number zero, even though it has the maximum contribution at that time. After that, uh, and which is very important as we have response curves. So response curves gives us uh, spend and effect uh, as in how much is spent we are doing. So on X axis, we have normalized spend and on Y axis, we have KPIs for all the channels. So for uh, channel zero, we see that as the spend increases, our KPI, which is sales is also increasing. So that means channel number zero is doing well. And similarly, if we go to channel number one, we will uh, similarly see that uh, the, the KPI that is sales is increasing as we increase the spend and likewise we will see the same for each of the media channels and then uh, this is normalized spend per channel versus KPI so we see that orange line which is channel number one uh, has the maximum KPI with lowest spend uh, that means uh, when we increase the spend on channel number one we will see the highest KPI or ROI in this case. And then uh, going forward, we will try to optimize uh, in order to see where we should allocate our budgets. So we are seeing prices uh, and media channels, then time periods equals to 10. And then we are doing re uh, optimizations with the parameter of our choice in this case, since we have spent and we have not taken impressions so we are doing previous budget allocation versus optimized budget uh, allocation and then what we are seeing over here is in order to identify the optimal weekly allocation so this is displaying now how much spend we should do on each of the media channel we have so the first one being for media channel zero media channel one so these are the optimal spend that we should have on each of the media channels and then we are simply plotting that on a chart. So when we plot that, we are able to see that earlier channel number zero has 43% of budget allocation, but in order to effectively optimize, we'll reduce it to 40%. And similarly, we need to increase for channel one, we need to increase to channel two. Uh, just a minor point that lightweight MMM only gives us results uh, and optimizes for 20% margin only. So if it's a 43%, we won't see that uh, it will propose to drop the spend to 20% or 10%. It will just give a 20% deviation out of the current one. And that's how we are able to see very close results over here. And then we will see uh, a pre post optimization comparison where when we are spending the way we are currently, we will be looking at this much target variable, which is sales. So uh, at the current spend level, we will see 7, 12, 4, 57. And if we allocate the budgets as per the above chart that we have, we will see an increase in revenue, increase in sales to 7, 2, 9, 8, 0, 5. So this is what, uh, this is all actually uh, that we have in lightweight MMM. So yeah, this is all what I had for this video. Thank you. Uh, to discuss uh, building a model, uh, please drop an uh, email to hi at rocketshiphq.com and we'll get in touch. Thank you so much.